be captivated now you can create responsive e-learning courses let me show you in detail how you can create a responsive course from start to end to create a responsive course go ahead and double click responsive project you will get a project with three different views in captivate you have a primary view and then you have a tablet and a mobile view the sizes that you see here for uh, the tablet and the mobile device is based on the most common device sizes but if you feel your learners have a different device size in terms of width and height you can go and easily adjust the dimensions for your course to change the dimension, go to the view for which you want to change the dimension and move the slider. Just go ahead and increase or decrease the size that you want. That will resize your course to the dimension that you are looking for. For tablet, go ahead and do the same. Just select it and then decrease or increase the size that you want. For the mobile view as well, you can go and increase or decrease it as you feel like. The minimum you can go is 320 pixels and the maximum value you can have for your uh, course width is 1280 pixel. So make changes to the device width and when you are happy with it, it's time to change the height. So uh, to change the height, you will not see the control up front because it is disabled by default. To enable it, you can go and check this uh, box which is view height device and that will give you the controls to change the device height. Here it will show you the exact pixels for the height. You can go ahead and make changes to it by increasing, by moving the slider and that will increase or decrease the slide height for you. You can see that now the slide height is 646 pixels. You can similarly go to the tablet view and increase or decrease it once the handle is available. For the mobile as well, you can go ahead and make changes to it. There's one more thing to slide height and that is that you don't have to uh, limit your content to this particular area. This is the area which appears up front on the screen. But if you uh, have a lot of content on one of the screens where you need some more space and you are okay to have a scroll, what you can do is you can go to the properties inspector and here you will find the slide height which is linked to the device height which is this. Unlink it and you will be able to increase the slide height which will go beyond the device height. This will allow you to have a more space in this particular view and that will not affect any other slide or any other view. So here in tablet you will see that nothing has gone wrong and in the primary mode also nothing has gone wrong. So you can just go ahead and do it selectively for one of the screen. Once you are done with adjusting the height and width, just go ahead and uncheck this so that you don't accidentally make any changes to slide height. One more tip, so if you want some uh, guidance on what will be the uh, common device height and width of your student's um, mobile or tablet device, go to this website which is viewport sizes which will give you the sizes of all the different uh, devices that are available and if you already have the device in hand just go ahead and type mine and it will give you the width and height of the device that you're using here i'm using a laptop and my and the viewport size of my browser is 1280 by 629 so you can have a clear view of what should be the width and height of your course the next step after adding after changing the width and height of your course is to add a theme so just go ahead and select the theme that you like and you can also decide to change the theme color if you don't like this color scheme. You can go ahead and choose any other palette or you can go ahead and customize uh, the theme colors by clicking customize and changing the colors from here. So I'll close this and then it's time to uh, look at how the objects are laid out in this theme. So you can see that in the mobile view, uh, this portion is completely removed. You don't see it here and this one is partially enabled. So you, you get a very different view in all these different breakpoints. And if you're not comfortable with any of these layouts, you can simply go to the master slide by clicking this button and making changes to the master slides. 
One more interesting thing I want to tell you about is the relationship of these breakpoints. So it has a parent, child and I should say a grandchild relationship. So whatever change you do here in the primary layout is carried forward in the tablet view and the mobile view. But it is not true the other way around. If you make any changes to the mobile view, it will not be translated in the tablet and the primary view. Let me show you what I'm saying. So I'm in the primary view and I type here, I'm in the primary view. Okay, and when I go to the tablet, you can see that the same text is rep replicated here and here. But if I go and change anything in tablet, and here I make this change, and if I go to the primary view, you can see that it still says primary view. But if I go to the mobile view, it has taken the tab tablet view property. So it has a parent, child, and a grandchild property. So here, let me just go ahead and change it to mobile view. What you can also do is you can decide to have an object in one view and exclude it from the other views. You can see there's a lot of space here so I can go ahead and add some character. So I'll click media and select character. Okay. So you can see that I've added this image here. I've added it here but in the tablet and mobile I don't want this image to be there. So what I will do is I will right click this image and say exclude from other views. And now when I go here you can see that this image is placed in a scrap area. It is not uh, placed inside the view so when you publish this course or preview this course this image will not be available. Very handy and uh, really interesting. What you can also do is uh, you don't have to really you know exclude it if you want it in two views and you don't want it in the third view. So you can simply place that uh, caption outside and it will appear in both these views and in the third view it will be excluded. So you can do all these types of adjustments. One more interesting thing I want to tell you is about uh, how uh, the objects in responsive courses are sized. So let's go, uh, let's select an object and let's go to the position view. Here you will see that by default, uh, the height of the object is set to auto and width is set to 19%. Now height is sort set to auto because in Captivate, height is not responsive. Only the width is responsive. So uh, you can, you should keep height as auto and width in percentage. But if you want the character image to be of the exact same size in all three views, you can go ahead and change this percentage to pixel. And you can even set the height to pixel. So you can change it to height and width uh, in pixel. And now when you go to the other views, you will notice that the height and width of the object doesn't change. You can see that the view becomes smaller, but the height and width of the object doesn't change. This is really handy if you have uh, some logo that you want to add and you don't want uh, the height and width of that logo to be to be affected or if you have some top bar, if you have some bon uh, bottom bar or you have some artwork that you don't want to be distorted, you can use this particular option and that will help you. This is also helpful if you have some uh, background image that you want to use. You just want to use a portion of it. You can also see that the positioning is also set to percent. Uh, this will allow you to uh, have uh, you know the position relative to uh, to the screen size. You can also see something like a percent relative. This is uh, helpful when you have uh, objects which are on top of each other. So if you have a screenshot and on top of that you have an indication that you have to click here, you should uh, use the option percent relative so that it appears on top of each other. Let me show you an example. So let me take a quick screenshot here. Let's take a screenshot of this. Let me bring this screenshot in here. So I bring this screenshot here and what I want to do is I want to indicate that this uh, thing has to be clicked. So what I will do is I will go to object and I will add a highlight box on top of it. Let me add a highlight box on top of it and I will show you what I am talking about. Okay, so uh, this is the place where I want to set it. Let me just adjust its height. 
and you can see that because I meddled with the height this has turned to percentage so I'll change it back to auto so that now it doesn't affect so uh, let me uh, change the properties of this highlight box so that it uh, looks a little better let me choose a pink color here so now I can see this highlight box now I'll show you what uh, what will go wrong here uh, if you go to the tablet view you can see that this highlight box is going down and here again this is going more down so to correct this what we can do is we can change uh, the position of this screenshot to percent relative and of this uh, highlight box also to percent relative and now these objects will move together so you can see that now the highlight box is on top of it and here also it's top of uh, it's top of it though the size is decreasing but the position of these objects is not changing so you can use this for uh, any objects that is uh, that is placed on in an overlay mode Another smart thing that I want to tell you is the smart position. So by default, uh, the objects that you have, that you see are linked to the edges of the slide. You can go ahead and change it to, you know, to be linked to a particular object. You can simply select the object. So maybe I want to select this object and I want to move it along with the screenshot. So now you'll be able to see that uh, this uh, caption is moving along with this particular object so you can do all those sorts of things and very useful for flowchart uh, you also have the ability to set the minimum and maximum height of the uh, of the object especially useful for interface elements logos and any other thing that you don't want to shrink or increase by any particular dimension so go ahead and use that option rest of the authoring that you do in responsive courses is the same as the other authoring all you have to do is place everything in the primary view and then go to the tablet and the mobile view to adjust it according to your requirements once you're done with this you can go ahead and preview your project and it will show you your project in three different views and you can uh, easily uh, make sure that things are working fine in your uh, course and you can see that it's it's looking beautiful and you can go to different views and check your project before you publish it and you can see that there is this nice slider which allows you to see in between views because there are just three breakpoints you can make sure that things in between are not breaking if somebody has a different size device they can easily use the slider to see in between views and see that nothing is breaking once preview works fine you can go ahead and publish your course you can publish it to devices or you can publish it to connect so let me show you devices first here uh, you will see two options which is mobile gestures and geolocation so if you your course checks for the location of your learner go ahead and check this and then publish your course and for gestures you get these gestures uh, for your courses so if you long tap you can play or pause your project you can swipe left or right for navigation you can pinch and zoom you can double tap to show or hide the table of contents and you can swipe up and down to show show hide the play bar. With these options checked, go ahead and publish your course and enjoy watching your courses on different devices. Thanks for watching this tutorial.